today we are with Toby Oline and he is harvesting corn today. So we are going to be talking about that on the podcast. So Toby, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your family and your family's operation. My name is Toby Oline. I farm near, uh, between New Salem and Elmont in Morton County, uh, North Dakota. Um, I've been, I'm a fourth generation farmer and, uh, I've take, took over the operation about 20 years ago, and uh, I have four children, a wonderful wife. Um, and we raise a pretty big diversity here from corn and soybeans to buckwheat and cover crops and uh, wheat and barley and things to feed the cattle, of course, and we, run, uh, we have a cow-calf operation. Is this where you grew up? Did you grow up in Morton County? Yes, yep. I'm on, I'm on the, the same farm as my, my grandpa, Arthur. And uh, yeah, my dad took over and from him and, and to me, and I have two boys who are, are really interested in farming and want to do that. So I hope it works out that way that we can get to do that. That's great. I was just going to ask you if any of your children are interested or are farming with you. Yes, yes. I have a son who just graduated college now, and he's, uh, he's running the harvester right now. So um, he really, really wants to farm. and. It's, you know, there's not enough land to go around yet, so we're going to have to fill in some holes with, with work. But, uh, yeah, we're hoping that works out that way. Yeah, that's awesome. So today we're going to kind of focus on your corn harvest. So when did you guys start harvesting corn and about approximately where are you as far as finishing within harvest? Sure. We started uh, beginning the last week, and uh, we're, we, we really dried up here. We've been really windy and really dry there's big wind gusts and stuff we had there was a few events um, but there was one that was like 65 mile an hour wind gust and it did break some cobs off and you know that's disappointing you know some fields are different and damage wise but uh, um, right where, where we're at right now we're about halfway through and uh, you know the yield was really good till the corn uh, <laughs> or till the wind came and, and, and broke some off um, even last week on Thursday we had a we had a bearing go out on the combine and and we started a fire, but we were we were anticipating, so we had a disc hooked up, and we Good. fortunately, by the grace of God, we got around it, and nothing bad happened. So, since you started farming, have you guys always had corn in your crop rotation? Um, my, when I grew up, my dad just raised corn for silage. I haven't always raised corn. It's been maybe ten years in, and it works so good for the um, for the cattle to come in and graze and stuff in the fall. And, and they keep getting better uh, better on the seed varieties and the hybrids and stuff that that really can handle a drought and, and things in between and it's it's worked out pretty good that uh, we can get a, de a good yield and a good average and and then we have that of course that follow up the, the cattle on the corn stalks so yeah there's nothing greater than seeing cows that see a field that they get to go graze on <laughs> well, and sure you know and when you lose these cobs you know this situation too you know they eat them right up and they, they turn that into you know wait for the calves so yep that's awesome so what would you say as far as just farming corn what has been probably your biggest challenge with growing corn well you know where we're at it's it's always weather you know we're yeah it's we're subject to a drought you know we're two weeks away at any point in time but uh, a big one's price um, this spring we started out with really really high fertilizer prices and you know our exports are down and yeah, there's a lot of with price is a big, big problem. It's not as profitable, and yeah, it really, really narrows up the margin. What What do you guys use as far as equipment for harvesting, and then what has changed over the years, or what have you seen as the biggest improvements that you guys have made? Well, of course, your, your GPS, your guidance, your uh, it's incredible. It's you know you're saving you're saving money. You're doing a nice job, and. Uh, you know, it helps you map and keep, you know, records, better records of when you sprayed it, when you planted it. You know, if you forget to write it down, you can always go back in. And most guys don't even write it down anymore. They just, it's all, you know, tied to their phone, but. Computerized, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not very tech savvy, but I sure appreciate, uh, you know, what we got. And, uh, you know, I got a son who's, yeah. <laughs> we're recommending upgrades so <laughs> it's yeah, amazing sure. the gps system i i don't think 
I don't think my dad would allow me to get into a tractor nowadays without a GPS because you get in there and I just automatically start weaving and mm -hmm. it's amazing. I mean, how people did it back then. They had a man they could drive straight. Yeah, practice. <laughs> yeah there was, yeah, especially, you know, we're, we're next to the road here and yeah, that first row you had to get set straight. So, so it looked good, but uh, you know, we farm with older equipment and, and, um, but that's okay. We, you know, we keep take them, keep them in good shape, and and you know things like that. We, you know, as as time goes on, you always uh, we always upgrade to something newer and better. As you know, something wears out, and so as far as technology wise, it's nothing as impressive. It's just a matter of just getting it in on time, getting it in right, and praying for rain. So, do you use any cover crops? Yes, for the past three years, I have been uh, planting multi-species cover crops. Get as many varieties of uh, seeds as you can, you know, in with a focus of uh, improving soil health. And uh, um, we started out with a few acres. I started off on marginal land and, and, uh, and now we're, you know, I'm trying to get it up to about one seventh of the, of the, uh, of my total acres and, and work it into a, and work it into a rotation. It's, it's far from perfect, but it's, we're starting that um, kind of a, an interesting thing is I've, uh, for the, this is my second year, um, but I used, I treated my seed with compost extract and, okay. and injected it actually. And we're doing some side-by-side -side yield um, versus conventional fertilizer. And uh, so far, I like what I see. I'm, especially in the corn here where we're doing, you know, it's very comparable without any phosphorus fertilizer. So that's awesome. Yeah. So we're, 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 we're trying to go that regenerative route, but there's still a lot to learn and, and just figure things out. Are any of the cover crops you use able to be grazed by your cattle? Yes, and and that's you know the the focus is on uh, is on soil health, but uh, um, I rotational graze and everything too. And my cows are pretty durable, and they they eat just about any kind of plant I put in front of them. But uh, yes, it's really important that the, that the cows get out there and and uh, and they they receive some nutrition from it, but yet they incorporate the. Um, you know, the, the dry matter and, and everything into the soil. I think the more people that start using cover crops realize how great they are. My dad uses them as well. And just like you said, if you have cattle, I mean, it's another source of uh, nutrition, but also what it does for the soil health as well. Sure. And, and, and it's, it's, you know, for us, it's really important to have both. I've increased the herd to, uh, so that you can maybe make something on the backside with a few more calves. And along with building up your soil health and things like that. So, you know, it's a work in progress. We're trying to figure, mm -hmm. you know, the best things and, you know, the rain is, uh, is the biggest factor for us. So that leads into my next question. Do you guys irrigate any farmland? We do not have, no, we don't have any aquifers or anything like that. So we're, we're completely reliant on snow and rainfall. Okay. What role do you think farmers play in advocating for agricultural policies? We're kind of moving to a different era yeah, subjects sure and it, it's i think uh it's it's really tough because farmers right now you have we're busy all the time mm -hmm. okay and to get involved in in advocating you know farm bureau is wonderful wonderful for that that's that's a big reason why i i'm involved in farm bureau is you know we can take ideas and policies and and there's a a, a structured smart relevant organization to help us with that in in our local legislature and of course on a national level but uh yeah i wish you know, national policy could <laughs> sit down with a farmer and and uh, i think it would improve things a lot absolutely and you said you sit on the morton county farm bureau board is yep. that right yes yeah i am uh, i've been a director on there for now about 10 years wow that's awesome thank you yeah very yep. much well it's it's you know it's a lot of fun we have a couple of events but uh you know our primarily focus is is working with uh, um, with kids trying to in, get into schools. We have we have an egg day in the spring, kind of show kids what uh, what agriculture is about, and that's our biggest event. And uh, we've sponsored meals and stuff. And but you know, all every member on the on the board is really uh, you know passionate about uh, young people and 
sharing the good news about agriculture. So kind of going back to corn harvest a little bit, as far as labor and getting help, what do you guys rely on? Do you have hired help? Do you rely on family? How do you how do you go about getting harvest done? Well, it's it's been primarily up to me. I, I do have uh, I have four children and um, ever since they can start driving, we've uh, they help out on some level or some way. Um, I have a, it's really good right now. I have my I have a daughter who t- t- helps tags the calves and her and her brother work well together. So every day they're tagged and they're checked and everything, and uh, the pastures are rotated and everything. It's it's a really big, big help, and and then that frees me up um, to uh, to plant and harvest and such. So yeah, I rely a great deal on my kids, and I'm trying to incorporate them. You know, where they they actually receive uh, receive a salary. And, you know, incentives, you know, they get to keep, Mm -hmm. you know, the cows and stuff. So, you know, there's a year end bonus there when the calves do well. So, you know, I do well, they do well. Right. So after you're, when you're done harvesting here, where are you trucking your corn to? Right now we're putting it in the bin. So when do you sell corn or how do you go about selling corn throughout the year then? Well, I'm trying to implement a, (laughs) a better marketing plan than you know, when I have to, or when I like the price. So, um, we try to break it up into increments about a third and, uh, and you know, I, I, I just do a contract uh, price with the, the elevator or the or red trail. And then I haul in those bushels at that time. And, and we try to do it in increments of three. So, okay. So that kind of leads into my next question. How has the current market and global economy impacted raising corn? Some guys like uh, sports, and I'm into politics, and I I I follow stuff, and um, it's unfortunate right now. But the uh, um, Russia and China and South America they've they formed their own trading, the, like BRICS. It's a, an acronym, but there's a lot of uh, commodities being traded on that exchange, and not through ours. And it's really disheartening as as a as an American producer that we're not taking part in that. So. Um, China used to buy a lot of stuff from us and, um, you know, now they're, it's down some 90 some percent this year, especially in the corn area. They used to buy a lot of corn and, and um, yeah, and that direct role or trade falls on the president. And so there's a lot of farmers unhappy with the current administration. So as far as any long-term goals for your farm, do you have any? I do. I do. Um, I want to grow acres and of course I'd love to get my, I have a 21 year old son and I would love to get him, him going farming and, you know, whether that it looks like in pasture for more cows or in more crop acres from transitioning the farm from one generation to the next is, uh, right now I'm, I'm, I'm a middleman here. I'm, I, my purpose right now in role is, is to grow it, make it better and get it passed on. I have two sons that want to farm and, and that's, that's my goal is to get, uh, to get them up and. I have a daughter too. She brings home someone, you know, we got to try to, I want to get my kids in agriculture as much as I can. If they want to farm, we'll farm. So, so what have you seen as the biggest challenge with this? I mean, I know your transition is slow, Mm -hmm. but has there been any major challenges or have things gone pretty smoothly so far? Anything unexpected that you were like, oh, I didn't see that coming. (laughs) Well, it is where, where we farm at is, is we, uh, um, we're subject to a drought, you know, 2023 was the most amazing year ever. We, it was so much fun to farm when you have <laughs> everything turned out good and you had rain and, and so rain is a real big challenge, but you know, it, it, everything balances out and, uh, um, you know, you look at it at a 10 year mm-hmm. and, you know, you get a few good ones in there and you get a, a few that you break even and some that aren't quite and, and it averages out and, you, you know, that takes some of the stress off of, off of, uh. Of farming. Any any future farmers and ranchers that are just getting started out there that might be having a hard time or second guessing, any any words of encouragement or advice that you would give to them that maybe um, you were taught or that you wish somebody would have taught you? Sure. There's uh, um, there's always a learning curve with farming. And, you know, when you're younger, um, for me, it was, you know, in my low twenties, I thought I knew everything and my dad didn't know much. And, you know, just be receptive to what your, 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 your father says, you know, in that case, or, or if you have a, 
uh, a neighbor who's been doing it a while, you know, that's, that's really important. There's, there's a lot of, a lot of important nuggets in, in that. And, uh, you know, but in the same side, you know, you want, you want youthful, you know, what's coming, what's new and, and younger people are, are, uh, are in tune to that. So if you got to put the two together and, and, uh, you know, live a good life, you know, be a good person and, and the rest works itself out. So. Yeah, exactly. So to wrap up today's session that we always ask everybody um, during the Harvest podcast, is this year's crop a boom or a bust? Well, it's it's right there in the middle. Okay. <laughs> it's right there in the middle. It was it was pretty good until the wind got us. So, um, you know, I would probably say it's closer to the bust, but okay. in the corn situation. So, because, the, yeah, the wind broke a lot of cobs off. So it will be a boom for the cows when they get yes. to go and graze it. Yes, yes. They will pick up every cob and, yep, and make their cows bigger, so. Great. Well, Toby, thank you for taking the time out of uh, harvesting corn. I know you're right in the heat of it, but we really appreciate you as a Farm Bureau member and also uh, telling us about your family's operation in harvesting corn. Thank you so much. It's uh, an honor to do it.